Hey game makers, Pixelated Pope here, and as the title suggests, this video is just a follow-up to my tutorial series on resolution and aspect ratio management in Game Maker. I've been getting a lot of questions, and I just wanted to put a quick video together to address some common issues and offer some advice for how to get the most out of the videos. So, on to question number one. This doesn't work in my game. That's not really a question. But regardless, I imagine there were many people who watched all three videos, or maybe just the third one, and built the resolution manager and dropped it in their game expecting it to work perfectly and were a little disappointed. There is no silver bullet that will make any game fit any screen and look great with a few lines of code. And while the manager's code isn't too intimidating, the real hard work is what you have to do to allow your game to take advantage of it. Elements of your game would need to support dynamically sized views and GUI layers. You can't just drop buttons for a menu in your room using the room editor and expect them to appear in the center or top right corner. Nearly every element will need to know how to position itself dynamically based on the current ideal width and height, and honestly, sometimes this is just not possible. Take the original Legend of Zelda, or even Link to the Past, any 2D Zelda. Every area in the game is exactly the width and height of the screen. What would happen if you dropped the display manager into Zelda? It would be horrible. You would either need to build the entire world and all the dungeons dynamically to fit the unknown resolution, which is totally out of the question, or be okay with being able to see areas to the left and right of the current room. This also doesn't work, as it eliminates those view scrolling boundaries that are a defining feature of 2D Zeldas. Every 2D Zelda in history has been built for a specific resolution, thanks to always releasing on a console. And if you tried to play one on PC, you would 100% get black bars, and there is nothing the developers could realistically do about that without fundamentally changing how the world fits together. It's not impossible, obviously. Binding of Isaac, which is heavily influenced by Zelda's dungeons, works on multiple resolutions and aspect ratios, but they sort of cheat. The playable area of every room in Binding of Isaac is the same aspect ratio on every monitor, but the border around the room changes to accommodate. Essentially, Binding of Isaac is being displayed with black bars, but they cleverly hide them with game graphics that don't look out of place. My point is that if your game is designed around a specific resolution, this dynamic resolution stuff is not right for your game. Just deal with the black bars and make a great game. If your game is awesome, people will deal with the black bars and there will be minimal complaining. How do you design for every possible resolution and aspect ratio? You don't. Between ultra-wide ancient 4x3 monitors and portrait displays, there are far too many combinations for your game to support every single combination. It's okay to say, you know what, I'm not going to support 4x3 monitors for my game, widescreen or bust. Your game can still play on a 4x3 monitor or even a portrait-oriented display, just with black bars. To do this, you only need to clamp the aspect ratio. So in the manager, after you calculate the display aspect ratio, put something like this. Aspect ratio equals clamp aspect ratio 16 divided by 10, 21 divided by 9. This will make sure the aspect ratio of your game will never be more square than 16 by 10, or more wide than 21 by 9. With those two extremes, you can calculate your min and max resolutions and design your rooms appropriately. Let's work through an example. So if my game's ideal height is 256, you'll get these possible resolutions, ignoring perfect pixel scaling for now. On 16 by 10, your resolution will be 410 by 256. 16 by 9, 456 by 256. And on 21 by 9, it'll be 598 by 256. So when you design your levels, you know the height will always be 256, but the width will be somewhere between 410 and 598. That's a pretty big difference. And if you are having trouble making a particular level or element of your game work with one of those extremes, maybe don't support it. Your 2D platformer doesn't need to support 21x9 monitors, you know? I've had several people who were designing a game for a portrait display, I imagine for a mobile device, and when they'd test their game in Windows, it would look totally wrong. First, you should do what I mentioned previously. If your game only supports portrait displays, clamp your aspect ratio. Secondly, while you are developing your game for a portrait display, I doubt very much that you are developing it on one. So here's a cool trick. You don't have to use display get width and display get height to calculate your aspect ratio. I mean, you should for the final release, but for testing purposes, you can type in whatever number you want. 
Want to see how your game would look running on a 480 by 640 phone? Just go to the Display Manager and replace all Display Get Width and Display Get Height calls with 480 and 640 respectively. It's probably smarter to save Display Width and Display Height as new variables and just use those throughout. Then you only ever need to change two lines when switching between test resolutions and dynamic resolutions. Now when you run your game in Windows, you can see what you'd see on that type of display. Obviously, going full screen will still result in black bars, but you'll have a much better idea of how your game will look on a particular resolution. So if you're developing a mobile game designed for portrait orientation, take advantage of this to hard code a test resolution for when you are running on Windows. Does this work for non-pixel art games? Absolutely! All of this applies to vector, or even the more typical mobile game art style. It's actually way easier. If you aren't using pixel art, you don't have to worry about poor scaling in most cases. Go ahead and design your game for 720p. It should look fine when scaled up because the art style will allow for it. But beware, building an HD game in Game Maker has other pitfalls, such as enormous texture pages which can make your build times longer and longer the more art you add. This is an issue at any resolution, but the higher base resolution your game, the problem becomes exponentially worse. If you are using real, pure vector assets, you will see noticeable improvement in the quality of your art by increasing the size of the application surface to match the size of your display or game window. So hopefully this cleared up a few things that may not have been explained well throughout the rest of the tutorial. The big takeaway is this. While this all may seem very important, if your game is fun, nobody will care about black bars or a little bit of pixel distortion. If that is a key concern for your players, you probably have way bigger problems on your hand. Building a game around dynamic sizes is hard. Really, really hard. If you are still pretty new to Game Maker, don't feel pressured to support different sizes. Just make the best game you can and maybe experiment with this in your next project when you can design around it from the very beginning. Whatever you choose, please continue to drop questions in the comments below along with any feedback or suggestions for future tutorials. If you like this video and you want me to shout more nonsense at you in 10 to 30 minute increments, hit those like and subscribe buttons. And just a heads up, I recently started experimenting with a new series idea to help people learn to debug more effectively. If you're itching for something else to watch, try out the first episode of Pixelated Pope Private Investigator in the case of the unknown variable. Thanks for watching, now go make something awesome.